In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's report today does come from the book of Psalms, and I got into a discussion about desire and how we talk about desire, because sometimes I think Christians go a little too far and overstate a little too much in the dangers of desire. Now, desires and passions can certainly be misled. They can certainly be corrupted. That's a common theme in the gospel narrative. A lot of the problems that Jesus confronts is he's talking about desires or passions that have gone too far in one direction or the other. However, we usually talk as, an, as though an excess of desire is always the problem. That's not necessarily true. See, I believe that sometimes our desire is either misplaced or we lack a righteous desire, and we actually don't have enough desire for righteousness, and so actually a excess, a, a increasing of our desire would actually fix most of our problems, because even our evil negative desires typically are rooted in something good. There's at least a grain of goodness and truth contained within them. A good example of this, and I'll go through a few here, when it comes to sex, a lot of people want to be able to have it before they're married. And even though that is a corrupted desire, it actually does come from a good place. Because human beings should want to be intimate with another person. And I don't just mean in the physical sense, I mean in the spiritual sense as well. They want a closeness, a relationship. They want to be able to trust another person that much. But that's a level of trust that is only supposed to come after marriage, and that's the reason that that physical act is supposed to be coupled with that commitment. And so it's not so much that they have too much desire for that relationship, it's that they don't have enough desire for a correct relationship, for a correct physically intimate relationship with another person. They don't have enough desire for that, and so they settle for the incomplete version of it. They lack the righteous desire to preserve themselves to make that physical relationship better once they finally do get married. And so actually adding more desire in the right direction would help them out. Hunger is a great example of this. If you become, you know, gluttonous, then in a lot of ways that's a lack of desire to use your body to benefit Christ because that should be the primary purpose of our bodies, correct? And so we're supposed to want to eat, we're supposed to want to preserve our life and to nourish our bodies so that we may use them as a method to spread the gospel to others. So it's a lack of that righteous desire that causes us to play into our more base desires. When it comes to fame, I think fame is another good one. We want the praise of men. The problem is we want the praise of men more than we want the praise of God. We should want the praise of men. The Bible is, is pretty emphatic about this. It tells us that we should conduct ourselves in a, a good way so that even our enemies will look at us and have a hard time saying that we're the bad guy and pointing that out to us and pointing out our flaws. We're supposed to, and, and are actually charged with being good workers, good employees, good neighbors, all of those things. We're supposed to desire the praise of men. It's only when we don't couple that with a much greater desire for praise from God and acknowledgement from Him that we start prioritizing the praise of men and it starts going awry. And so it's really more adding desire in another area that would be the correct manner, the correct way to fix that. Same thing with money. A lot of men desire money, and it gets them in trouble. Why? 
because they aren't putting that desire in the right place. We should desire money. We should desire it so that we can use it to help other people, people that are in need, people that are less fortunate. And we should also want money so that we can use it as a means to protect and provide for our family. That is a godly thing. That is something that God charged us with. But it's when we start desiring the money itself as opposed to desiring it for the good that we can do with it, when we no longer look at it as a resource to improve our Christian walk, that all of a sudden it becomes a problem, that it becomes tainted, that our desire winds up in the wrong direction. And so that's really the difference here. And that brings us to the passage of the day, and it comes from Psalm 37, 3-4. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. I want you to notice a couple things about this verse. First of all, it's conditional language. The psalmist David here doesn't just say, okay, well, if you do this, then God's going to give you whatever you want. Notice that there's a condition added into that. That before God grants you the desires of your heart, you have to trust in him and do good. So in other words, once you have transformed your relationship between you and God, and once you have submitted yourself in obedience to doing what's right by him, then your request can be granted. You understand why that's significant? Because a sinful person that comes to God and just asks for whatever they want, that request is going to be a lot different than someone that has actually submitted their will to God. They're not going to ask for the same things. And so even though God doesn't, of course, answer every prayer request with a yes, I mean, he didn't even respond positively to every prayer that Jesus prayed. Even he had one uh, unrequited, unanswered prayer in the sense that God said no when he asked to be uh, spared the, the pain and the agony of the cross. And so once we have really submitted our will to him, he changes the desires of our heart. And so yes, the desires of our heart are granted, but it's only after that heart has been transformed and it knows the right things to ask. God's not a giant gumball machine in the the sky that if we do the hokey pokey and and dance exactly this way and and do it the way that he wants to, then he's just going to give us the things that we want. That's not how it works. Once we have been totally and completely reformed, once we've been washed in his son's blood and transformed into a new creature, The things that we ask God for change. The desires of our heart do change. I never met anybody that got everything that they wanted until everything that they wanted was God. Stay the course, friends. Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.